Hello everyone, we're here with Mr. John Marshall Jones, uh, iconic award-winning actor, um, starring everywhere from Criminal Minds, The Fosters, Glee, Pretty Little Liars, Shameless, the iconic smart guy, the list goes on. How do you handle all of those hats being on all those shows and longevity in this career this long? Well, you know, you got to make a decision early on that you're going to do uh, what you need to do to have yourself prepared for every platform where they are uh, offering a job. So you got to be able to do comedy. You got to be able to do drama. You have to be able to do classical theater. You have to be able to do voiceover. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to do commercials. Right. You have to be willing to go with the flow uh, because because uh, that's how the, the business works. Okay. And um, sometimes you'll hit something really big and you can ride that for a while and maybe even for the rest of your career. But if you don't, then you just got to dig in and decide that you're going to be one of the people that are working and you just start working. Exactly, exactly. So take us back. Um, when did act, the acting bug begin in you? Uh, when I was five years old, I played the dog in The Passion Play. And at intermission, uh, the cow, who, you know, the cow is always two people zipped up into a cow, a cow outfit. And uh, they had it unzipped because it was so hot in there. <laughs> and uh, the lights came up and nobody was out on stage because we couldn't get the cow zipped back up again. And when I was a kid, when TV would go out, they would have a card come up on the screen that says, due to circumstances beyond our control, there would be a slight delay. And that was part of how I learned to read. So when the lights went up, nobody was out on stage. I just walked out on stage in my dove costume. And at five years old, I said, due to circumstances beyond our control, there will be a slight delay. <laughs> and there you have it right there. The show bug was started. <laughs> there it was. <laughs> so with tapping into all of these roles, um, is it ever overwhelming or draining to have to become so many different characters? No, it's, uh, it's energizing, as a matter of fact. It, it is what the actor lives for, is the constant uh, variety and challenge of reaching into yourself and finding different ways to express the humanity of different characters. Right. That actually has, uh, is a really strong part of my new film, The Last Revolutionary, which is playing on August 26th at uh, 11.45 a.m. at the Western Peachtree Hotel. Which is exciting. Bronx, yeah, at the Bronx Lens Film Festival um, coming up this Saturday. Right, right. And, uh, and, go ahead. And you're actually, uh, you're actually executive producer of this project. Right, right. So being a skilled actor of your caliber, how is it now stepping into the other side of the camera? Now you are behind the scenes and getting things together and putting other actors in places. It's actually pretty natural. You know, you're in front of the camera for a long enough time that you see what the director is doing. Uh, you see what the producers are doing. And once you're put in a position where you have to produce or you have to assist the director in some regard, um, you know, that training that you've had just comes up naturally. So this was really uh, not a stretch for me professionally, mm -hmm. um, but it is a great opportunity to tell an amazing story and to put my uh, all of 
of my creative energies into it. Wow, 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 wow. So it, it feels, it sound, it's great to see that you are willing to help um, and put people in place to where they can be as iconic as you are. Now, you also have, um, tell us more about mastering the audition productions. Uh, I created a, uh, a book and CD called Mastering the Audition to help uh, aspiring actors understand what the professional audition process is about. So, uh, in essence, imagine that your acting career is a Ferrari. Mm. And you know how fast this car can go exactly. and how good it feels to drive it. Mm -hmm. But you can't figure out how to start it. Ooh. And how frustrating that must be. Exactly. To have a Ferrari, but not know how to start the car. So in the acting career, the audition is the key to starting the car. Okay, 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 okay. So, in addition to that, I want to first say thank you to, um, I grew up with you. Uh, oh. When I say you were an iconic dad figure, um, I tuned in to Smart Guy every chance it came on TV. But he wasn't a stranger. I met him on the net. He was a nice guy. You know, that's what scares me about this whole internet thing. I mean, you're talking to a guy before you ever get to see him, so he feels like he's not a stranger. But you know what? He is. And that's probably why you felt like it was okay to go over there. But it wasn't okay. And as soon as you saw that, you got out. Well, it won't happen again. I packed up the modem, and I'm giving it away. Mm. I don't want to talk to anybody on that thing ever again. Yeah, I understand. I could kind of be throwing out the baby with the bathwater, though. Now, sure, the Internet let that guy in the house. But doesn't it connect you to a lot of good things and good people? But how, how does it feel knowing that you were an iconic dad figure to a lot of the youth now? Uh, there is no greater honor in my acting career than the role on Smart Guy. And many, many times, almost every day, someone comes up to me and tells me what you just told me. And those young people now are, you know, in their early, middle 30s, and you can tell they're doing all right. So to have had a positive influence on a generation of young people, I couldn't be happier or more honored uh, by having that represent my work. Okay. What would you say um, would be your ha has been your biggest key to success? I think the biggest key to success is that I never doubted my dream from the very beginning. And what I've learned over time is that it's impossible to do something every day for your dream and have it turn into nothing. For instance, if you took a book and put it in an empty room, the first day you did that, you'd have a book. But if you did that for 30 days, pretty soon in that room, there'd be a pile of books. But if you do that for a year, you have a library. Mm -hmm. And your career, your dream, whatever it is, um, the idea is that you're trying to take a book and turn it into a library. Everybody else, an empty room with a book in it right. but you see a library mm -hmm. and so you have to keep putting that book into that room until it becomes a library and then everybody will look around and say wow what a brilliant library but they won't see that until you do it exactly exactly how important would you say with your craft um, was it to make sure that you give back um, to the next young actors well, i tell you, uh, probably 20 years ago or so, I ran into Morgan Freeman as he was coming out of a nightclub in Los Angeles. And I just wanted to, to tell him how much I appreciated what he was doing. So I approached him, said, Mr. Freeman, I just wanted to say thank you 
for everything you've done to blaze the trails for young actors like myself. And, um, and I'm going to do everything that I can to honor the efforts that you put in. And he stopped and looked at me and said, well, thank you, young man. What's your name? And when Morgan Freeman asked my name, I was so unprepared <laughs> for the idea that he would have any interest in me at all. Right. Um, that even to this day, I get teary-eyed when I think about it because all he had to do was take a little bit of an interest in me and it changed my whole view on who I was and what I was doing. And if I can have that kind of impact on a young actor, even just by stopping and asking his name, then I've done my part. That's monumental um, because you don't find a lot of skilled actors of your caliber that want to give back to young actors and help them flourish in their career as you have in yours. So that's actually very commendable, and I applaud you for that. I also have to sneak in. My uncle would kill me if I did not say this to you. He's a Kappa, and he wanted to salute you. He's, I, he, I told him I was interviewing you tonight, and he said, Oh, tell my brother I said, what's up? <laughs> hey, what's, your, what's your uncle's name? Greg Williams. Greg Williams, J.J., State of Chapter, 198. <laughs> so, uh, what's next for Mr. John Marshall Jones? Well, right now the focus is on The Last Revolutionary, uh, which is showing August 26th uh, at 11.45 a.m. at the Western Peachtree Hotel at the Bronze Lens Film Festival. Uh, we are nominated for Best Feature Film and also for Best Actor in the festival. And so Amazing. from there, thank you, thank you. From there, we're heading to the Greater Cleveland Film Festival. Uh, we have several other festival dates set up. And uh, my focus right now is on the last revolutionary and making sure, number one, that as many people get to see it uh, through our, um, our visits to different cities, because I travel with the film and meet people and sign autographs take pictures and do the whole thing, uh, and then also making sure that we get a distribution situation that will allow as many of the people who are in our audience to see this as possible. Right, okay, okay, okay. So how would you say you want um, the viewers to feel after seeing this? I think after seeing this film, I would like the viewers to be thinking to themselves, what should I be doing to help move the path of black America forward? Mm -hmm. what is, what's my part? Mm -hmm. Because revolution comes in many different ways, but it starts with a thought and a willingness to take action. So your willingness to take action might be to buy Hooked on Phonics and Hooked on Math and go down to your local elementary school and say, I'm going to volunteer here once a week to work with the kids that aren't reading and doing math up to their grade level. And my goal is to make sure that every child that graduates from sixth grade from this school can read and do math at a sixth grade level. That is revolutionary. Yes, very. So, um, so everybody has a revolution within them and if this movie gets people to think of what is the revolutionary in me and how do I go out and make that happen then I would consider this movie a complete success and we claim it already to be an amazing success um for the people that don't know how they can find you please let them know where they can find you <laughs> exactly and there you go I want to thank you again for talking to me and allowing us to learn more about your artistry 
Before I let you go, I have to ask you, because literally when I say you were on the TV screen last night, how fun was it to play uh, Ernest Orange on the Parkers? Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> that was one of the funniest things I've ever done on television. And what you see in the episode, they had to cut a bunch of it out because people were laughing so much. I can bet. There wasn't, there wasn't time. <laughs> um, so it was great. Monique was uh, absolutely uh, fabulous. Uh, she was great to work with. Very, very giving. And, um, you know, and I would love to, at some point, bring that Ernest Orange character back. I think he Yes, he's show. iconic. When I tell you, <laughs> you, I know I had a six-pack after watching that episode. I know I did. You know, <laughs> the finger waves and the coochie sweater. <laughs> and he was just too much. Exactly. Most definitely, um, during the, the most trying of is when laughter can be the most healing thing. Exactly. 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 So again, I want to thank you for speaking with us. And I have to personally thank you for your words of advice, um, making us laugh, uh, making our days better, uh, showing us that we can do this and being that great iconic father figure for a lot of us that didn't really have fathers that look to you on TV for that father figure that gave us life lessons through life and we are excited to see where it's next for you and we are definitely ready to see the excellence and the success from the last revolutionary well uh you are welcome uh it has been my pleasure to put out images that african americans can be proud of and if you're in the atlanta area on august 26 at 11 45 a.m at the Western Peachtree Hotel. Please come down and see The Last Revolutionary at the Bronze Lens Film Festival. I'll be there signing autographs and taking pictures, and I'll take a picture with you even if you got your camera on a selfie stick. (laughs) And I'm sure they will love that. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. John Marshall Jones. And make sure you guys tune into The Last Revolutionary, and you will find all the tips under this video. Take care, everybody, and go to all the news. Yes, sir. Thank you so much.